I'll give you two more because I think these two are really incredible. Light can be divided. Again, Job. Job 38, 24. Sir Isaac Newton studied light and discovered that white light is made of seven colors which, which, colors, which can be parted and then recombined. Science confirmed this four centuries ago. God declared this four millennia ago. Also, ocean currents anticipated. Psalm 8, 8. 3,000 years ago, the Bible described the paths of the sea. In the 19th century, Matthew Murray, the father of oceanography, after reading Psalm 8, researched and discovered ocean currents that followed specific paths through the seas. Utilizing Murray's data, marine navigators have since reduced by many days the time to require, required to traverse the seas. So, science has proven the Bible to be factual. And archaeological wise, because a lot of people said that the Bible wasn't archaeological sound, they've been finding more and more evidence of archaeological sites to prove that the stories in the Bible are true. And this is one that I'm not sure, you know, I, haven't, I hadn't heard about, but someone told me about. And this is a picture someone found This is interesting. I don't know if you can get a shot of that or not. But it's a dinosaur stepping in a footprint of a man. There's a dinosaur track stepping on a footprint of a man. They have this on display in the uh, Creationist Museum. And they say they proved it through uh, verified by spiral CT scan. So this was found in July of 2000 by Alvis Delk. And it says it's in display on the Creation Evidence Museum in Texas. So that, that is really a pretty cool thing there, but we won't go too much more into that. But I mean, I, I didn't even know about it. But um, it's at, I think you can go to www.bible.ca is where you can find that. I think that's the site that I went to to find that. But it's in the Creation Museum. If you go to the Creation Museum, it would talk about this. Okay, and then, and then we talk, and the complexity of the human body also just cries out that, that evolution is, is a farce. Because... Um, that is one, excuse me for interrupting you. Oh, it's okay. Uh, Sam, you really sound like you've done your research, a very knowledgeable individual, and... Uh, you know a lot about a lot of things, but that is really something I'd like to delve into is the mystery of the human body, the reproductive system, how do all these things come about, how is the human body able to ward off some diseases, how does all this happen? You know, I've, I've always been curious about that, and as much as I believe in uh, evolution, that is something that doesn't totally jive with me. Right. Okay. As far as our immune system, well, first off, let's get to our DNA. Let, let's start here. Let's see, human DNA consists of about 3 billion bases, and more than 99% of those bases are the same in all people. The order of sequences of these bases determine the information available for building and maintaining an organism, similar to the way in which letters of the alphabet appear in a certain order to form words and sentences. Okay, and it, it goes on, explains DNA, and then it says, an important property of DNA is that it can replicate or make copies of itself. Each strand of DNA is the double helix, can serve as a pattern for duplicating the sequence of bases. This is critical when cells divide. Now here's the thing. Okay, the cells divide, so if evolution is true, these cells divide, they wouldn't necessarily create the same cells. But it's critical for that when these cells divide, each new cell needs to have an exact copy of the DNA present in the old cell. So that's saying that, that every time a cell uh, copies itself, it has to be an exact copy. And the body contains over two million proteins, each with a different function. There is no way, I mean, you have to have a lot of faith to believe that that can happen by chance. I mean, a lot of faith. As, as far as the body's immune system, 
that is incredible. You know, and I, I'm not a biologist, so I, I really can't give you a full-blown explanation. But the thing is, though, is that our immune system obviously builds up to where it, it builds a barrier against certain diseases and such. And we have, oh boy, like I said, I'm not a biologist, but in a nutshell, our, our body can build and build up immunity to certain things. I mean, that's like, if we were to eat the same foods, like some people scavenge through garbage and that to eat, it would probably wipe us out. But there are people that can eat that because their bodies have adjusted and have adapted to that. They haven't evolved to that. They've adapted to it because their stomachs are exactly the same. The only difference is that the way they produce, uh, that they uh, ingest the acids and um, they ingest it and the way they break it down is differently than how we do. So that's about as far as I can go with that because that's another tremendous thing with our bodies that evolution can't explain is how, how we can adapt, our bodies can adapt so quickly to the cold, to the heat. That's, our bodies do that. Our bodies do that naturally. So like I said, I'm not a biologist, so I really can't, can't say a lot about that. But um, anyway, the, uh, the thing is though, is that um, unfortunately, there are, there are people that are Christians that uh, accept evolution as being part of creation. It's really sad. Um, it says here, when most scientists came to accept evolution by around 1875, European theologians generally came to accept evolution as an instrument of God. Pope Leo XIII, for instance, referred to long-standing Christian thought that scriptural interpretations could be reevaluated in the light of new, law, new knowledge. What we need to understand here is this is a Catholic belief, not, not a Protestant or non-Catholic belief. Non-Catholics non do not believe this. This is, this is a, and that's a whole other discussion. So anyway, and Roman Catholics came around to acceptance of uh, human evolution subject to direct creation of the soul. In the United States of America, the development of the racist social Darwin eugenics movement led a number of Catholics to re reject evolution. Okay, so, you know, so basically you have a Pope that said, you know what, eh, I can bite into this. We'll go ahead and we'll just say that this is fact. Unfortunately, this does happen. Uh, Pat Robertson of the 700 Club, a supposed man of God, so there was a big bang. So that doesn't mean it came spontaneously. Nobody knows what caused it, the big bang. But I say God did it. God caused all of this. He is the author of all life. He continued, in fact, Robertson said. He was able to find his faith in the evolutionary process itself. I don't believe in so-called evolution as non-theistic. I believe that God started it all and he's in charge of all of it. The fact that you have progressive evolution under his control, that doesn't hurt my faith at all, he said. I think it's time we come off, off of that stuff and say this isn't possible, he said. Unfortunately, as I said, what they're doing is, is that they're taking and dismissing the word of God. They're, they're saying that, oh yeah, you know, I can, I can, I can, I can believe evolution. But like I said, evolution is something that takes a lot greater faith to believe in than creation. Okay, Samuel. I'm an open-minded kind of guy, even though I really don't believe in creation. You have piqued my interest, so I'd like to come back and talk to you again sometime and uh, see if I can uh, pick your brain and delve into more of this, if that's okay with you. Well, actually, I'm just about done with, with what, I, what I have to say. Could you give me another 10 minutes? I Maybe sure five? can. Okay. All right. But yeah. But, okay. So, so anyway, um, so we have these guys that their faith in God is so weak that they're willing to turn to faith in man. Mm -hmm. We can't do as As a Christian, I can't do that. You know, I, I believe that, that the Bible is accurate. And here's something that I found interesting, and I, I pulled this offline, or online, and it says, How to Defend Evolutionism Against Creationism. 
And it's it, this. Is, I thought it was a joke when I read some of these, but this is truly what they want to use if you're an evolutionist to talk to a creationist. And it says, if a creationist asked you to explain the origin of the universe during a debate on evolution, say he's gone off topic. Biological evolution has nothing to say on the origin of the universe. Excuse me, but how can you make nothing, something out of nothing? If you, if you don't have the building blocks, how can you build? So basically what they're saying here is that avoid that topic at all costs because we know it's junk. We know it's bunk. And the, set, the next one, and like I said, this, this is actually taken offline about how to defend evolution against creationism. You can go online and, and you'll find it. And it says, a good scientist would reject or revise the evolutionary theory based on the facts that are progressively presented. In fact, evolutionary theory has been revised many times over and will continue to be revised in the future as the facts demand. In other words, they can say, whoops, my bad, Let, we're, we meant to say this, that's not science, that's, that's comedy. If you must explain how this is not, as it might first appear, a weakness, but in fact an example of the scientific process at work, science accepts almost nothing as 100% proven, and is always ready to change its mind when new information is discovered since when I mean you know when I when I was doing chemistry yes there you know there were you were able to create new 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 uh, new um, compounds and such but once you made a compound and that compound was there that compound stayed so I'm I, this and I can see now why you know in my opinion evolution is garbage science but then we get over here to, um, I already told you about, uh, about Darwin. You know, once again, this, these are quotes. Darwin, and again, I'm going to re-quote it, says, to suppose that the eye with all its imitable contrivances for adjusting the focus to different distances for admitting different amounts of light and for the correction of spherical and chromatic aberration could have been formed by natural selection seems, I freely confess, absurd in the highest degree. And then... Evolutionists such as Stephen Jay Gould reluctantly concede this when they say, the evolutionary trees that adorn our textbooks have data only at the tips and nodes of their branches. The rest is inference, however reasonable, not based on the evidence of fossils. These are evolutionists saying this, not, not non-evolutionists. And I like this. This, this is, uh, in his latest book, his mislead, in his latest book, Misleadingly entitled The Grand Design, Steve Hawkins makes the adventurous claim that because there is such a law as gravity, the universe can and will create itself from nothing. Think about that. How can the universe create itself from nothing? Yeah, there, there has to be a starting point. Exactly. There has he's, to be a starting point. But he's, he's saying, he's saying, that there is, that, 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 that it can happen. I mean, that, that's, to me, that's the first sign of insanity is tr doing the same thing over and over again and getting the same results, expecting uh, new, new results. Um, and then these, these, uh, this guy here it says, at the same time I found I could reject evolution and not commit intellectual suicide, I began to realize I could also accept a literal creation and still not commit intellectual suicide. A.J. Monty White, student advisor, dean of uh, students' office at the University of Cardiff, UK. Dr. White holds a Ph.D. in the field of gas kinetics. Another one. I believe God provides evidence in his creative power for all to experience personally in our lives. To know the creator does not require an advanced degree in science or theology. Timothy, Timothy G. Standish, an associate professor of biology at Andrews University, in the USA. He holds a PhD in biology um, from George Mason University. So these are these are people that you know those are some pretty strong statements both by um, evolutionists and non-evolutionists and it just 
to me, it's, it's mind-boggling that you have all of these people that, that they can't seem to agree, but yet they teach evolution as a fact in our schools. When in actuality, it takes more faith to believe in evolution than it does in God creating the universe.